I bought this. I knew when I bought it, it's probably not great. In fact, I bought it more for the comedy value than anything else. Let's see how bad it really is. Essentially, what this thing is, it's made of two metal pieces with grooves that butt up against each other, with a brace across and presumably uh, some high temperature plastic piece in the middle. I lost the instructions, I'm not actually sure if it came with any or not, but I don't think that matters, there's not a lot to guess here. You have to put one filament piece in one end and the other in the other end, and then you heat up the middle. I've seen a lot of people use lighters on these, but I didn't really like that idea because you know, actual flame, you're burning the PLA. So I have these. One is a Dremel soldering iron that doubles as a tiny heat gun with various adapters for all sorts of wood and cutting and stuff. The other is an eight pound blowtorch, which doubles as, well, I'm not overly confident in its safety, to be honest. It doesn't seem terribly well designed. It doesn't even have an ignition on it, so you have to light it manually, but it does give out a decent flame nonetheless. The Dremel one, however, has an optional catalyst thing inside the cartridge that you can remove, but with it in there, you can heat up without a flame. So it's basically a heat gun, if you get what I mean. This is also how gas soldering irons work, in case you're wondering. There's a little bit of mesh inside that does some magic and turns fire into heat. Anyway, both of these take butane, which we buy in these cans, at least that's how it's done in the UK. It's about one to two pounds for a can here, and I'm not putting a lot in, so a can will last a long time. I don't like to leave a l any in the things afterwards, or certainly not a large amount in the things afterwards as you put them away, so I tend to load in about as much as I want to use, give or take. Let's get right to it. I'm going to try some diagonal cuts first, and because that seems like it might make sense, I'm going to see what happens. It's actually pretty hard to get them to line up diagonally, but I eventually did. Also, it seems like you need three hands for this. As you can see, there's no hope of a fourth hand to focus the camera, so sorry about that, but you get the idea. That was an absolute failure anyway. I don't think diagonal cuts work at all. I just don't think that's going to go through the Bowden, do you? It is stuck together pretty... Well, ugh, it's not even stuck together pretty well. Absolute failure. The biggest issue is actually how much the PLA doesn't want to be in the thingy in the first place. It wants to curl around all over the place, and keeping it straight is a problem. I know you can straighten it up, but the stuff behind, off the reel, you've got to kind of hold it, otherwise it just pings back and... Uh, anyway, I'm trying just a straight cut this time on both pieces and just butt them up against each other. You can probably see here that this is better, but it actually has zero strength and it just pulls apart. Also pretty useless. I'd like to say I'm having fun at this point, but no, the angle I had to sit at to get this in front of the camera so you could see it while I was doing it, my back was absolutely killing me, but here we go again. Yep, that happens. That happens a lot. I thought maybe if I could stand the heat gun up it might help. This is not particularly safe, so do not try this at home. It does save me a hand though, which helps a lot. You can see that I've made a total mess nonetheless. I wondered if I could do a better job without using the thing at all. It turns out, yeah, you kind of can actually. This is a great way to burn your hand, so don't do it. But with practice, you could actually get a reasonable result. But don't, it's ridiculously dangerous. I mean, why would you do that? You're heating up PLA to melting point and then touch it. No, don't do it. I tried with a soldering iron. All you win here is PLA on your soldering iron, and that makes smoke, and it stinks, and it doesn't work. By the way, I figured out that two different materials don't like to stick together, meaning not PLA and TPU or anything like that. I mean, silk PLA doesn't want to stick to normal PLA. And even between brands, they don't always want to, which is obviously really useful. Eventually, I figured out that you have to draw it through the plastic bit while it's still semi-molten. I guess that's what that's for. And things started to get a bit more reliable at this point, but it's still not great. I also realized that this thing looks a bit like a demented rabbit. This actually isn't so bad, though. Hello, Delta, my old friend. I've come to play with you again. I have no intention of breaking any of my working printers, so here is one of my old mini Deltas. They're just plain old Bowden, so this is a realistic test of how most printers would work without causing me a bad day if this goes wrong, because I just don't care about these printers anymore. They, I know that sounds cruel, but they thermal overload. They don't have any protection and I can't be bothered updating the firmware and fixing all this. So I forgot how hard these things are to load as well. Anyway, I have three samples. Let's load in the first one and see if it extrudes past the joint, which I have to say looks tenuous. 
on the first sample. By the way, if you're wondering about direct drive, well, both of my direct drive printers actually have a short PTFE tube between the extruder and the hot end anyway, so there's not a lot of difference functionally in terms of whether this is a good test or not. If it goes through 30 centimeters of PTFE tube, it would work on 2 centimeters of tube on a direct drive. The reason I'm not testing it on a direct drive is because my direct drive printers are less disposable, and also, have you ever tried to disassemble a direct drive to get a lump of PLA out? Anyway, I'm manually extruding on this machine using the buttons, because why not? Um, we're up to the joint now, and... It's gone past. Now we keep going until we see a change in the nozzle. Interestingly, there's some serious die swell in the nozzle. Still extruding here, and... There we go, black filament. In with sample 2 now, which is a better joint, but it's definitely thicker than it should be. In fact, it looks very dodgy. This looks like it ought to jam. In it goes, and this looks hilarious, but... It is also happily past the extruder, and it's still going. I don't think I've ever seen so much die swell before. Anyway, eventually, after much button pressing, you literally can only extrude by hammering the button on this machine, we do get to the black changeover, and there's no issues at all, so that's 2 out of 2. You can actually see the joint still on this, which is kind of weird. Finally, a joint between two brands of filament. One is Technology Outlet, which doesn't they don't even sell anymore, and the other one is die swelling stuff. Uh, unfortunately, as you can see, this didn't even make it to the extruder before it came apart. It seems like some filament brands just do not like to stick together, and this is problematic if you're planning to use this method for colour changes or similar, or maybe multi-material, I think you've got no hope. So anyway, in summary, that kind of worked, as long as you are staying with the same filament, I guess, or the same brand, or whatever. But anyway, here's the butt. I have to say, when I mentioned that I was doing this on Discord, someone said to me straight away, why don't you just put a new filament in behind without actually joining it? And it seems pretty obvious, doesn't it, when you think about it? So let's try it. And yes, it does work. Most of the time, anyway. It did fail on this one occasion here, as you can see, but this was because it's kind of my fault. I was being overzealous and I was feeding in curled up stuff and I was just messing about. I think it probably depends on the filament and how brittle it is as to how well this will work. Um, if it bends in the extruder or whatever, you can see it's kind of pushing over the top of the old filament. You can't see that probably, but that's what was happening. So this is going to need disassembly, which luckily on this printer is a quick unscrew of the pneumatic connector, like so. Again, this is why I didn't use a direct drive. So I think if I plan to use this welding method at all, which I have to say I probably don't plan to, but one of the key safety issues is the high possibility of knocking over the heat gun source thing. So I'd probably design a holder for that, and it wouldn't be that hard, you just need something that holds it upright. I might even go as far as to design a jig to hold the workpiece in the right position so that it's directly over the heat source, and I think that would increase reliability of quite a lot. But the bottom line is that given you can feed in new filament as it runs out, as long as you're there to do it. But anyway, otherwise, these are all better options than trying to weld the filament. And I think they're all equal or better reliability as well. So as long as you straighten the incoming filament properly when you're putting it in, and you have a fairly for forgiving Bowden extruder design, I think they're a better way to do it. Add to that as well, the amount of butane that I was using is not negligible. It wasn't much, but it's not negligible, and so that's quite wasteful. It makes no sense at all to expend so much energy in heat to save a few scraps of plastic. I mean, it wasn't an outrageous amount of gas, but it felt like I'd rather just save the time, effort, and butane, and not bother at all. Of course, it probably heated the room a bit, so there's that. Personally, though, what I will do with all these end bits is what I already do. I save them for my 3D pen. If you haven't seen my old video, really old video, on how to weld with a 3D pen, then go see it. It's not the best video in the world, because it was a year ago, but go watch it. It tells you that you can weld 3D filaments, so and now you don't need to watch it, I suppose. But anyway, I want to hear if any of you have tried this abomination. Did you have more luck than me? I don't think it was an abject failure. It worked, but I think you'd have to really want to use it. Do you use one? What for? Leave a comment below. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. <laughs>